Hi everyone and welcome to the Lingard. Today I'm going to do a look inside Beowulf language art and then also show you what I picked to go along with it. Now, I don't have Beowulf grammar yet, I'm getting that as the next on my list um, and I'll do a separate video about when, about that when I when it actually arrives. Um, well, it doesn't arrive, but when I <laughs> purchase it and print it because it's a PDF. Um, but I'll, we'll get started with Beowulf language arts first. Okay, so this is again is a PDF download from her website. You can also access it via the online portal, which you have for two years access to. Um, but obviously if you've downloaded it and saved it onto computer, then you've got it forever. Um, there's just lots of information. There are different uh, groups that you can join about the curriculum, an introduction to it. Um, and then she mentions Beowulf grammar is essential. It's part of the, you know, the, the um, curriculum schedule. So you do need to get that, but it is you do need to purchase that separately. To purchase Beowulf language arts uh, schedule, it was $20, and then Beowulf grammar is $40. So you can do this with more than one child because it goes from grade two to grade six. Um, so you can, you know, uh, if you've got multiple ages, you can bring them together and just adjust expectations for them. There are, she lists quite a considerable amount of books that go along with it. However, she gave, gives you a template, which I'll show you in a second, where you can either buy them or get them from your library. Um, my friend actually found most of them at her library. She's in America. I couldn't find hardly any of them, but that's just my library's useless, basically. Um, so I did buy some of mine and then I also got some of them used. They do hold resale value really well because often I would compare the price of new versus used and they were very similar on a lot of occasions and a lot of them were on sale as well. Um, so it's just, just shop around, basically that's what I did. Um, but you can obviously resell them on. But I think these types of books anyway are great for reference for future as well. So I don't think, I think, you know, they're the kind of staples that, you know, you, you would want to keep around anyway. But if I could have got some of them from the library, I definitely would have done. It's just that wasn't an option for me. Now, she also does recommend a spelling program as well, which is also a PDF download. Again, I'll do. I'll talk about that when I do Beowulf Grammar. I'll do those two together. Um, but that is actually free. So the one she recommends for spelling is an actual free program. So she goes through all the um, introduction to the whole curriculum. There are two levels for the spelling book. Um, these are all free. You can just download those. It's not her book it's just it's um in the main now public domain i really like the introduction i would definitely read through it because she gives you lots of information about why she does certain things um some information for you to read as an educator as well you know different reasons why she's picked to do different activities in language arts so i think it, and for example this one is about read alouds a doc um something for you to read about why it's really important to do reading with your children um and also for them to actually pick their own books and things. So it's really, um, really interesting to actually read through all the different links that she's put out. Um, now she does actually recommend a phonics program if your kids are still needing that too. I didn't purchase that because obviously we don't need to, but um, she does recommend um, a couple of different phonics programs if you are still in that stage. Now she also does recommend some read aloud. Most of them we've actually read, so I didn't decide to go with those, but I'll show you what read alouds I decided to go with in my actual curriculum haul of the year. Um, there was a couple that we haven't read, so I probably will do some of them, but for example, Trumpet of the Swan, Charlotte's Web, Sean Chakofachi, we've read all of those and they are great books. Mrs. Frisbee read that this year. So there's nothing wrong with our recommendations at, at all. They're, they're great, it's just we've read most of them. Um, but I will pick up a couple of them that she suggested that we haven't read yet. And then she makes a point of being very um, explicit at the fact that this is a schedule and it's for you to decide whether or not you want to use certain aspects of it. You're in charge. I really like that. You know, it's your homeschool. You can decide. Don't be afraid to change if it's not working. If you gives you an assignment, you could hate it, switch to another one. And she makes it very um, clear that, you know, it's not you must do A, B, C on this schedule. You know, you can mix it up and that, I really appreciate that um, because that's life, isn't it? We all know that. <laughs> okay, now when it comes to the reading list, she's marked them as two, three, and four. So two are items that are not, sorry, one, two, three, and four. So one are essential, two are not absolutely necessary, but recommended, th uh, highly recommended. Three is optional, but recommended, and four is optional and less important. So she's, she's giving you a whole list, which is on the next page, of the books, and then she's listed them, ranked them. So for example, 
Beowulf grammar is a one because you need it. <laughs> Story magnet kit is a two. This one's a three, four, and so on. And then she's giving you buy, borrow from library, ebook, or Kindle unlimited subscription. So you can tick it off once you've got all your books. I've I've done this actually in my other copy. This I reprinted this um, to put in my binder, but I, I have actually utilized this list and it was very helpful. Um, when I was going through of what I was going to purchase. So there's several pages of the book list. And again, this book is only used, I've only been available used. So you know, you know, you might have problems finding that one, but there was only one out of the whole list that she said that about. I haven't had any problems finding any, any of them. They're all readily available. Um, and she split them into different categories. These are your handwriting, these are your poetry recommendations, vocabulary, spelling, a multi-subject reading and lesson tie-ins and then for here for example here it's choose two so you don't have to get all of those you can just choose which ones out of that those those uh options um she also recommends using the read aloud handbook and that's the end of oh and she also actually recommends which i really liked a couple of books for you to read yourself um i haven't actually got it yet but i definitely want to get it where is it it's um so definitely the read aloud handbook but there was another one hang on a sec so it's called the logic of english um teaching reading phonics spelling and writing something along those lines but it looks fantastic i definitely want to get that one okay so once we've and then she's done an overall list as well printable checklist too so once we've actually got through all the book lists and we get to the actual schedule I'm not going to show you the whole thing because obviously, um, you know, she'll presumably want you to purchase it to see, but I'll just show you a couple of, a couple of days. So for example, week one is introduction to grammar for types of nouns. So this is the bear wolf grammar section. So it'll have a day one, two, three, four, and five options. And it'll tell you what pages they need to do in their workbook and what pages you need to reference in your teacher's guide for bear wolf grammar. As I said, I'm going to do a separate video about bear wolf grammar for you. Now she's tied in the books. So for example, um, she said to use this one, a mink, a fink, a skating rink, what is a noun? And then if you were a noun, then she's put some online ac interactive activities, which I thought were great. So basically you click on it, it takes you to a little game. Then she's also put some printables that you can print off and I have printed them off and put them in the binder. Um, I'll show you a couple of those in a minute. So for example, this one was a noun poster, a noun coloring page, and then an online interactive activity from DK, parts of speech. There's also a video you can watch. Um, then in their writing, so that's that's all their grammar. And then in their writing, they are to start their time capsule journal. So she'll say, you know, use any of the pages that they want to do in any order and as much as they want to do, they're in charge. And then also let's draw a story. Again, that's one of the other resources. Read pages two to nine, read the prologue, and then again, let them loose to do as much as they feel that they want to do. Um, so I really appreciated that. Same with the Q&A for Kids journal. Um, as many pay, read the introduction and then set them free. And then for poetry, uh, nothing Monday, nothing Tuesday, nothing Wednesday. And then on Thursday, it's page seven to eight. William Blake is the first poem. The For vocabulary and spelling, we have got English from the roots up and it tells you which ones to focus on and when to practice for the spelling curriculum again she's put what she you think she thinks she should do so copywork dictation and then a spellingcity.com review at the end of the week for literature reading and stories she recommends you go to the library and then free reading plus you put your read aloud title in and you can mark off what days you've read it and then this is for you so this is your section so uncovering the logic of english is the book that i was talking about before i definitely want to get that one and she gives you a chapter for you to read. That's not for you to read to your child. That's just for you to read for development purposes. And then she's put some notes on the bottom for you to consider. So if any of the links aren't working, to let them know. Um, or to obviously, obviously do a search on YouTube for what she was likely talking about. And then the extra grammar activities are not scheduled on a specific day to allow you to fit them in whenever you wish. So for example, over here, the grammar tie-in books and all these additional interactive activities none of those are scheduled the videos aren't scheduled you can just pick so say you've got some extra time on day one okay right i'm going to read this book on day three actually i'm going to do this uh, noun game so i really like this flexibility there it's not you know all these different things that you're supposed to do every single day because you know sometimes you have an appointment that you've got to go to you know you've got to go to the doctor or the dentist or you know your kid's got a sport or something and it's a lot easier to um 
plan around that when it's so freeform, which is why I really like it. Um, so say we're going on a field trip, I'm not going to have to think, oh no, our field trip's on day four, we've got all these things we're supposed to have done on day four, <gasps> oh, what am I going to do? I can see, okay, well on day four we've got this, I'll just move that to day five, and then we'll do the book on this day instead, and I really like the flexibility of that option, and I think it's more realistic and more how people actually live, <laughs> and, and school too. <laughs> um, so look at, let's look at week, let's not look at week two, we'll look at a different one, so you've got a little comparison. Okay, so week 10, we're on verbs, making verbs and sentences, helping verbs, helping or linking verbs, three types of verbs. So we've got our Beowulf grammar section, so our workbook, our teacher's guide, and then we've got some review at this point. For our grammar tie-ins, we've got some verb games and some verb videos. So for our writing, they're, again, they're not scheduled because you can just pick what day you want to do them on. For our writing, we're doing our time capsule journal on Tuesday, which is page 28. We're doing Let's Draw a Story, The Rainbow Bridge. Then we're working on our writing project, which is Sincerely Yours. So this is to write a business letter to a restaurant or food company and ask for coupons. Um, I'm going to be interested to see if they actually give us any for that, but it'll be fun to do. So they've recommended a couple in the US. Um, obviously, we'll just find one here. And then Writer's Toolbox, that's the assignment for Sincerely Yours, which is this one. So in the principles packet, there's a letter template if needed, which she included in the actual download. Then for your poetry, you're doing the ballad. Um, and you can do some poem memorization. These are what your words are for your roots up, for your spelling and um, copywriting dictation. It's still the same for the modern speller because that's the one she's recommended. And then you've got your free reading and your read loud. And then finally, I'm going to show you week 26. So this is diagramming indirect objects, marking indirect objects in sentences, review predicate adjectives, um, diagramming predicate predicate adjectives, making predicate adjectives in sentences. So we've got our Beowulf grammar sections. Um, she has just put Mad Libs for our tie-ins this week, for our uh, grammar tie-ins. For time capsule, we've got page 57 and 58 to 59, and she's told us we need to get some stickers. For Let's Draw a Story, we're doing Hoist the Sail. Um, then Q&A a day, you can just tick off when you've done it. Words, Wit and Wonder, we've got a few different options for this one some printables that she's suggested we print so i have put those in the back um, of the, the binder writer's toolbox we're doing these same things and then she's got some recommendations for some books for us to read read today uh our poem we're doing christina rossetti then work on what we're going to memorize and then we've got our words for english from the roots up and our spelling we can put our read aloud in so that's three weeks of what it looks like so some of the things I printed, so for example, I printed this little poster and that's from one of the grammar books. And then there was also a colouring page that went with it. I thought that would be fun. And there was a little game too um, that they could do. This is for poetry. There's a little charades game. I haven't cut them all out yet and laminated them, but I will do soon. There was a little mini archaeologist study as one of the suggested activities. I printed that. Um... So that'll be fun to do. Okay, and now for the books that I decided to get, get. Some of them I already had because I'd used um, some of these previously. So these two I'd already had. This is a fantastic book, this Writer's Toolbox. You've got all your different styles of writing in here. And um, it's really interactive for them to read and learn how to write different um, pieces, writing pieces. Adventures in Cartooning, my daughter absolutely adores this book. Um, so it's told through the actual characters in the, in the comic and explains how to write a comic throughout and it's really really fun she loves that she recommended this book of mad libs the 50 year one my daughter adores mad libs and the great practice there's lots of different themes in here and she'll say okay this week do the zoo one um, for your writing activities this was a book recommendation how kids can write and illustrate terrific books so look at my book so setting title revision format layouts and when they're actually doing their writing projects and she does schedule throughout different projects for you to do out of this book which is called don't forget to write so there are 50 actual prompts in here and she's scheduled less than half of them so this is something you could definitely utilize again you know in future years yourself in your curriculum uh, for, for writing and choose different uh, pieces for you to utilize she recommended the time capsule this looks really fun, and then my daughter's going to really enjoy that. Um, this Let's Draw a Story illustration school. This looks so, so fun. This is actually one of the recommendations for handwriting. 
um, which I think is such a fun idea. The Q&A journal for kids. This is a three year one, which is so fun. We can put this in our bedtime basket and we can write something every day. So I love that. She also recommended this one for writing and um, handwriting and writing, how to draw cute stuff. I think my daughter's going to love that one. For them to keep track of what they're reading, she recommended this bookworm journal so they can write everything they've read and then there's a little section here they can rip off and feed to the bookworm. So it was really fun. The two books I picked for poetry was the Charles Introduction to Poetry. We already had this one, so that was handy. Um, it comes with a disc as well. And then this one I purchased, Where the Sidewalk Ends. This is so funny. And my daughter's going to really enjoy <laughs> reading all these little silly poems. So this is English from the roots up, so this is for Greek and Latin vocabulary. Um, this looks like a really interesting one. So it's got your word at the top, and then you can do your word study. And again, you can adjust this for different ages. Some of the books for writing assignments were these ones. So this one is Fresh Morals, Beastly Fables, Squids Will Be Squids. This looks like a really fun one. I can't wait to do that. And um, this is one of the ones where you picked out of the little menu what you wanted to do. So I picked the True Story of the Three Little Pigs by the Wolf, um, the Stinky Cheese Man, and other fairly stupid tales. So those are the ones that I picked for those uh, writing uh, activities that you could do where you could choose. Then there was another book, The Other Side of the Story, Fairy Tales with a Twist. I'm really excited to read this one. It just gets you thinking about different aspects of story writing and storytelling and so it's like a really fun one to go through there were you could buy one you didn't have to buy both but because we've got dogs and cat i knew i had to get both of them so they're for helping them when they're trying to write their opinion essay activity um so they look really fun um this was the read aloud handbook she recommended um i got this one used um so i'm really looking forward to diving into that one and seeing what options there are for more for writing is this story maker, create silly sentences and story tile kit. It's really fun. And the how to tell a story book with all the little cubes um, that you can use to practice storytelling. And then this one was for spelling, so this little hangman game. And then I got a collection of the different grammar ones. I've tried to get one from each of the different parts of speech. I think I'm missing a couple and still need to get. So this one is for adjectives. Um, this one is about punctuation, why commas really do make a difference. Um, for adverbs, this one is a greedy apostrophe. <laughs> These are going to be so fun for her to read. She's going to love them. And this one is for understanding adjectives and adverbs. Um, this is another one for punctuation. The girl likes spaghetti. Um, this is an adverbs one. And this one is for... My dog is as smelly as as dirty socks. <laughs> this looks really fun. So this is play on words and similes. I know that's going to be a really fun one. Okay, this one is again for nouns and this one is for verbs. Then this one is similes and metaphors, more punctuation and another punctuation one. And I've got marker on my bed. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? You, you always get marker on your bed. If you have kids, it's fine. It washes off, but it just makes me laugh. It's the, the sure sign you've got kids is if you've got marker on your covers. <laughs> I love it, though. I wouldn't have it any other way. So that's everything that I got um, in terms of purchasing so far. Um, there are a couple that I still want to get. Um, that's what it's like inside the schedule. If you've got any more questions about it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in our next video and I will be doing a flip through of the Beowulf grammar as soon as I've got it. And I'll also um, show you inside the modern speller too. Well, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.